This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1256, 100 Days, and Freedom, both by Brianna Harry of yamash.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, reading to you every day, including holidays, just like an audiobook, but free of charge, mostly from blogs, sometimes from books, always with permission from the websites, otherwise it would be copyright infringement. And happy Monday to you, hope your week is off to a great start if you're listening in real time. I have two posts for you today, Both are from Brianna of yamash.com. That's Y-E-M-A-S-H.com. Before we get to it, hiring used to be hard. Multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing review process. But today, hiring can be easy with ZipRecruiter, where four out of five employers who post a job get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And now my listeners can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. For now, let's get right to today's two posts as we optimize your life. 100 Days by Brianna Harry of yamash.com. When I started a daily meditation practice, I didn't think about goals. I didn't think about what it would look or feel like after practicing for a month or a few months. I just knew that I needed to find my peace I give myself a little more access to it each day. And those days marched on. Today is my hundredth day of meditation. I've been meditating every day, every morning for the most part, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. As a person with anxiety, being able to look back on the past hundred days and countless moments that I've been able to successfully quiet my mind, it's like I've untapped a superpower. There's so much power in that silence, so much power in presence. Today is also my actual half birthday. Now, if that ain't divine timing, I don't know what is. So to answer your question, no, I don't feel cured or healed or zen as f- Not all the time, not every moment. I'm still triggered. I still break down, but I feel better in my humanness. I feel like I do have a little secret key in my pocket to my utmost peace. It's the simplest thing, but no one seems to know about it. No one seems to realize that a lot of times, change isn't needed, most times. All this uncomfortable shifting and repositioning to be different, it just isn't necessary. That's what meditation taught me. As I got closer to this day, I started learning just how much more there is to this work. I see a therapist, and she hints at the inner work that still needs to be done, but is really gentle with me and my chosen pace. Then I got intuitive counseling the other day, and that was a doozy of its own. She didn't tell me anything too devastating, but definitely some things that I knew deep down, some things I've been avoiding. She revealed a lot of what needs to be addressed. I believe though that if it wasn't for the meditation and me learning about this space of calm and love that I can tap into whenever, I wouldn't have been ready or able to receive these messages. It takes love to care enough for yourself to be better, to grow. I've gained access to my love through meditation. I've been learning to use meditation as a tool and it's still not second nature for me, it's hard. It's very easy to keep cool and calm and breathe my way through life's little shitty moments. When things are really hard though, when I'm crying uncontrollably, struggling with self-doubts and down talk or plagued with confusion and frustration, I'm still learning to utilize this tool in those moments. The gift though, the love, is in knowing that it's there. Now that I've been exposed to it, I see everything as temporary, and that is just comforting. This too shall pass. Like really though, the love for meditation is unconditional, truly. Now that I've opened the cave to my inner shadows, I know what lies ahead. I know that I'm not further away from sleepless nights, from crying spells and self-prescribed isolation. It's still just as scary, just as uncomfortable, but now I just feel prepared. I just feel willing. With the first 100 days of meditation, I gained access to myself. I lost the fear of facing my darkness. With the next 100 days, I'll put all of that into action, listening to myself on a level I never allowed before and healing from the inside out. Here's to 100 more days of unconditional love, a love I could never get anywhere else. I have another post for you, but really quick, thank you again to ZipRecruiter. Hiring used to be hard, multiple job sites, stacks of resumes, a confusing review process, but today hiring can be easy and you only have to go to one place to get it done, 
ZipRecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, but they don't stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and invite them to apply to your job. As applications come in, ZipRecruiter analyzes each one and spotlights the top candidates so you never miss a great match. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. And right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ziprecruiter.com slash old. That's ziprecruiter.com slash old, ziprecruiter.com slash old. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Freedom by Brianna Harry of yaymash.com. In my first couple of therapy sessions, my therapist made it a point to be sure that I started to actively think about and define my values. Spitballing these values as they came to mind began to make every missed connection I've had pretty clear. For my relationship with my parents, my friends, my past partners, I started to see very clearly why I disconnect from them. I don't know that I'd ever made an effort to define my values before this point, so this process really helped me to learn a lot more about myself. She framed it by asking me what's important to me, what is essential for me to feel. My very first thought, freedom. In that particular context, we were discussing how I want to feel as a result of my interaction with others, how I wanted to be treated by potential partners, my peers, my friends, family, colleagues, everyone. Freedom was my first thought because I thought about how much I don't like to feel obligated. I also thought about how much I shut down when I experienced judgment. There were other values that I added to the list, but saying out loud that freedom in particular is important to me has started to reshape my thoughts and behavior. In spaces in the past where I was made to feel limited, I didn't really know the reason I rejected those moments. I knew I didn't like how I felt, but that was it. I'd feel my nose wrinkle up or feel that little tingle in my chest, but never knew to read those physical sensations as emotions. Now, with that phrase readily in mind, freedom is a core value of mine, I'm much better prepared to set a tone for how I want to be treated before getting to the point of rejecting a moment completely. It's been feeling like great progress, but I just realized that there's more to it. I'm a firm believer in treating people how you want to be treated until you learn how they want to be treated. I also believe deeply in the law of attraction, that what we put into the universe is always returned to us. With this in mind, it hit me the other day that freedom being a core value of mine has to mean more than just what I'm willing to receive, I have to give freedom. Me reacting negatively in spaces where I don't feel free was not only teaching me what matters to me, but also teaching me to catch myself and avoid treating others in a way that impedes upon their freedom. I need to feel like I can be my whole self, so I need to make sure that I am a space for someone else to fully be who he or she is. I need to not feel judged for my thoughts, my actions, and my beliefs, so I need to make sure that I'm not judging others' thoughts, actions, and beliefs. I reject the feeling of obligation. I don't like to be made to feel like I don't have a choice in a matter, so I need not to make others feel obligated. I'm thankful for having the realization that defining my values was only step one. I'm thankful for now knowing that my values aren't just about me and about what I demand for my connections with myself and others. I have to do the work of building myself and my character around what is important to me so that my values, like freedom, aren't just flowing to me, but flowing from me in my connections with others. You just listened to the post titled 100 Days and Freedom, both by Brianna Harry of yamash.com. I love that quote, that adaptation of the golden rule where she said, I'm a firm believer in treating people how you wanna be treated until you learn how they want to be treated. Such a good point. And it's funny, if you've seen her videos, you wouldn't think she deals with anxiety, and that's probably true for most people I know who have anxiety. It's often not something you notice in them. And her daily meditation practice sounds like what I did after graduating from business school. I had a condition that sounded like it was stress-related, if not completely caused by stress or anxiety, so I did the same thing, practice meditation daily. I tend to go overboard, so I did like 30 minutes a day for over a year. And really, I think it helped, but she did a great job explaining how I felt, not cured or anything like that. It doesn't work that way, but I do recommend trying meditation if it's something you've always been interested in. 
But that'll do it for today. Have a great start to your week, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.